Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we're going to walk you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about how you plan to market your new business. Now, if you have been listening from the beginning of the podcast series, you should be almost ready to start your new business. You've done your research on your competition, you know who your ideal customer is, and you understand the pain point that you plan to solve for them. So in today's episode, and probably the next episode, we're going to talk about marketing your new business. Because if done right, most of your marketing should be free and not really cost you any of the precious dollars that you just don't have yet. At minimum, if it does cost money, it's going to be very small, and you're going to try to get the biggest bang for your buck. Because I don't want you wasting money on things you don't need right now. You need to focus on things that have a great return on investment so you can build up your retained earnings in the business so that you can take on more business. Today we will talk about a host of items and in the next episode we'll dive deeper into some of the do's and don'ts of having a website and we'll spend some time in the following episode about after that on social media. So more to come on websites and social media. Now keep in mind, your first six months is all about letting people know that you are now open for business. It is all about getting the word out as cheaply as you can. So it is a good time for us to take an episode and talk about the different things that you can do to let your community know that you are ready to start serving them. So let's dive in on some of these things that you need to consider. First off, family and friends. You need to use them to jump start your referrals. The first thing that you want to make sure of is that you are telling everybody that you know that you are opening this business, especially the ones that live in your trade area or your service area, because those that live in your community are going to become little soldiers who are going to go out there and start referring you to their family, friends, and neighbors as well. Do not underestimate these people. They will probably be the first ones to send you business via their referrals think about it. They already know, like, and trust you. So they're going to be transferring that trust they have in you to these people that they're referring you to. Hopefully they already like you. So this part's going to be pretty easy and they're going to really want to help you get your business off the ground and running. Now, I understand some folks don't like to tell their family and friends out of a fear of failing and never hearing the end of it. I get it, but you need to ignore those haters. They can find out later take them out of your life. I'm not saying go to them. You need people that are going to support you. But sometimes a hater can turn out to be one of your biggest supporters. They might say stuff to your face, but they don't really want you to fail. So they're actually going to be behind the scenes helping you more than you could ever imagine. They just don't want to give you that satisfaction and they just don't want to say positive things to your face. Plus the cool thing is they're going to have egg on their face when you don't fail and you're very successful. Now, if you have a brick and mortar business, let's start with you first, because brick and mortar businesses have a different challenge because they're going to have to figure out how to get people to find the location that they're at. For example, you might need a big banner that says now open. Heck, you can even put a kid on the corner with a giant arrow or a sign twirling it around, telling people to point towards your business to let people know on the streets that you're right there. Brick and mortar businesses might also need to utilize balloons or other giveaways such as coupons to try to get people into the store. You can probably even rent out one of those giant gorillas or those flippy floppy tall men that you could just watch for hours. I know I can. I love watching those guys. But you may have to bring some outside stuff to the outside of the building to try to draw attention to your location. Yes, they do cost money and they don't really fit our goal of trying to be free. But it just goes to show that as a brick and mortar business, you're going to need to save up some money for advertising and marketing more so than our service-based people who go out to people's businesses because you have to draw attention to the actual building. Brick and mortar businesses are more dependent on people finding out where they are in the location and being a destination. They need people to stop driving and pull in. We want people to be curious as to who you are and what's going on so that they come check it out. But it's really important, by the way, that you check out your local ordinances because sometimes they'll only let you have stuff out for a day or two. Sometimes they'll let you have it out for a couple of weeks. What you don't want is that you go spend all this money on your advertising and they come shut you down. So it's important that you have a plan, but you also tie it into the city and what they'll allow you to do. Now, all the other stuff that I'm going to go over works for both brick and mortar businesses as well as regular businesses. 
Okay, everybody needs to leverage their local newspapers and magazines. One area that you're going to want to look into are those local papers. Maybe you've got a local magazine. I know we have one. Whatever is the most popular in your community, you want to think about these smaller publications that get mailed out to people's homes for free. They don't have to subscribe to them. They just automatically get them. The smaller your town, the more likely you have one of these. Sometimes you have them in a specific community in some of the larger cities. These can be great opportunities for you to be able to get into them. And sometimes you can even get into them for free because they're always looking for stories that they can put in there. They're not the traditional type of stuff. Yes, they need to try to make some money, but because they need articles, they might find that your business is perfect for them to be able to put in there. And it might be tied into where they'll do a full article on you if you'll go ahead and sign up for six to 12 months of advertising in that little paper. And typically they're going to be the cheaper advertising. Local papers are always looking for articles that they can run to highlight the community and many love to support these local businesses on top of it. So just reach out to the editors of your local paper or magazine and see if you can get an interview set up. And if you do it soon enough, you might be able to time it to where the opening of your business ties into the exact same time. If not, even if you can do it afterwards, that will still work as well. Always keep in mind, free advertising is great advertising. So you want to try to see how you can get as much free advertising as you can. Now, you might recall in our previous episode when we talked about branding, the brand is not only who you are, but what you plan to do. But here's the cool part. It is also typically your story especially if you're a local person who lives in a community trying to serve those who live among you. People love these things. They love hearing about your story and it's a great way to get your brand out there at that time and start setting the stage. People love to know that they're going to be supporting a new local citizen's business. Another great benefit is they may not even realize they need your services, but after reading the article and now that they know you exist, they might just find that you can solve pain points that they have that they haven't been able to figure out they even had. And in some cases, people will even save the article because they know they're going to need your business soon. Now, the next item that you want to consider are flyers. Sometimes flyers can be cheaper since you can put two of them on one piece of paper and then cut the paper in half. Flyers are a great way to be able to let folks know that you're in business. However, flyers are not as popular as they once were, but they can still serve a purpose. You will want to keep an eye out in your community to find areas that allow you to place flyers in them. It might be the local grocery store, laundromat, bars, bathrooms, or even the community centers that you have. The key is to make sure that you are keeping an eye out for any place that will allow you to do this. You have seen some of the most simple flyers with those little pull-off tags for people to call. Use that. In today's technology, most people just grab their cell phone anyways and snap a picture or they call right away. Don't ever underestimate these types of flyers. You might be surprised that if you happen to have a flyer up and someone has that pain point at that moment, they're probably going to give you a call right away. So don't get hung up if people aren't tearing off stuff because they might be calling directly from your phone or they snapped a picture. By the way, a lot of these same businesses will let you put your business cards up. Some will do both. Some will do one or the other. So please make sure that you're looking at what it is that you can do. Now, I get asked all the time if you even need business cards anymore. Honestly, they're hit and miss. It really depends upon your business. We have so many different generations that are out there nowadays that some will use business cards more than others. Uh, you might want to create a digital business card that you can you know, text over to somebody right away. So you have it for no matter who needs what, because at the end of the day, you just don't want to miss a good opportunity, regardless of whatever way that they would like to get your business card. Now, a word of caution when it comes to flyers and business cards, you will want to check with your local government if it's okay for you to place these on vehicles in parking lots. Some city ordinances will not allow you to do this as it violates their litter laws. Unfortunately, a lot of these flyers and business cards will get ripped out of the windshield and thrown on the ground. And it's going to be awful hard to say it wasn't you when it's your stuff all over the parking lot. So please make sure that you check with your county or your city and the place of business if it's okay for you to leave these on the cards. Just because someone else has been doing it doesn't mean that it's okay and you don't want to be the one that gets busted. Let's talk about websites for a second, both yours and other people's. Now we're going to do a more in-depth episode on websites, but I want to touch a on them a little bit here. Let's face it, 99% of the people will start online nowadays. They're going to grab their phone and they're going to start Googling who can solve their current pain point. Your mission is to make sure you're one of these 
three people that they find on Google. You know what I'm talking about. When you Google, you get the top three. Here's the cool part. Most of this is free. All you have to do is claim your business on Google. I don't understand why people don't claim their freaking business. You need to claim your business. It needs to be the first mission before you do anything else. You need to go to Google and Bing and claim your business. Even if you do not have a website, Plus, there are other types of businesses out there online that will let you put your business on there for free. You need to take advantage of that. Matter of fact, don't forget Yahoo, Help, or any other website that might be crucial for your type of business. Everybody has different websites that people will use based off of your business. And you want to claim your business. By the way, you also want to add a picture and some contact information you need to explain to people how to get a hold of you and how you can help them. Please do not put on there 30 things that you can do. Focus on the one or three that are going to account for about 80% of your business. Dial in. Don't make them read novels. What you're trying to do is just say, hey, I solved this, this, this pain point, and here's how you get a hold of me. Let me be that person for you. you. It doesn't need to be anything more complicated than that. You just want people to keep reading. We have short attention spans. You have to get in and get out. And I'm telling you, a lot of this is for free. Whenever you're Googling and looking around, look for any website that might show you or your business. You know the ones that show up with that little gray silhouetted man or woman. I want you to claim those. Now, if they try to get money out of you, you can make a determination based off of that website. Some of them are just there to try to get you to spend some money or to sign up. Take each one of them as they come up and how important are they to your specific business. But if it's free, you have nothing to lose. So just go ahead and claim it, especially because most people are going to leave it blank. And if they're looking at your business with 10 other people and you're the only one with the picture, trust me, they're probably going to give you a call because people like doing business with people. They don't like to be scammed. And for some reason, when it's a silhouetted person, you know, that gray person that's all grayed out, a lot of times they don't trust those over somebody who's got their actual picture and logo on there. So take advantage of those. Please, whatever you do, do not skip this step. It is probably the most critical thing you can do for your business, whether you're brick and mortar, service-based business, or working from home. Claim your business everywhere. It is a great way to get your business jump-started and people to be able to find you right away. And it's one of the cheapest things that you can do. When someone's on Google and they put in pool cleaner, Google's going to pull up all their options. And you want to be that A, B, or C option. Like I said, those top three. And the more you claim yourself, the more that, that Google can go out there and see that you're a legitimate business, that's part of the algorithm that they use. You want to make sure that you fill everything out that they have on there. Yes, you want to get those reviews, but even if you look at that, not everybody will have the best reviews or the most reviews and they're still in the top three. You want to use it to your advantage. Put a post on there once a week. It can be short and sweet, even just pictures before and after. The main thing you want to do is you want to interact with the internet and Google when it comes to your business because they're going to say that, hey, there's things going on out there. This is a business to get in front of people. All right, let's change directions for a minute and let's talk about vehicle magnets or truck wraps. Are they worth it? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, they are not cheap. They're going to cost some money. But I'm telling you right now, I am a huge fan of truck wraps. They aren't cheap, but they are going to be something that down the road you're going to want to do for your business. I don't recommend you doing it right away unless you've got the funds to do it. But the reason that I'm a huge fan for them, because nothing beats the number of eyeballs that you will get looking at your business with a truck wrap. And honestly, it's probably the best form of money that you can spend on advertising because these things can last five, six years, depending upon your location. And it works out to be 25, 30 bucks a month. You cannot beat that. So most people, because you can't do a car wrap right away, is they'll start off with those car magnets that you can buy online for $25, $50. You might have local businesses that can create those for you. That's another way to go. Now remember, less is more. Don't try to tell them everything that you can do out the gate. You want to pick the one to two, three items that you want to start being the biggest part of your business because they may not have a lot of time to read everything that's on that magnet. But it's just another way for people to, even if you just start off with your logo to start with that whole branding kit, that's still going to give you some business. But pick one thing that you want to let people know that you're there. What pain point do you plan to solve? Carb Magnet is a great way to start. Then save up your money and move towards that car wrap.
Now, another interesting advertising tactic that you can use are coupons and bounce back items. And since some of you are probably wondering if you should use coupons or place an ad or sign up for some paid advertising, this is a section that we'll go ahead and talk about for you. Because for most of you, I'm actually going to say no, because the odds are you're starting on a shoestring budget. And the last thing you need to do is commit to $100, $200, $300 a month to another business. You're just not going to get that return on your investment. But most existing businesses still waste money on these advertising methods and never get their money back. So I'm not necessarily a huge fan unless you're getting that return. Because if you do $100 on advertising, keep in mind, that's $100 of new profit you need to break even. It's not that you need to do $100 in sales, it's profit. So let's just say you make 20%. That means you're making $20 every $100. You have to sell five things with this new coupon before you even break even. You need to run the numbers and you need to understand it. When I was trying to get my business off the ground back in the day with my ice cream shop, I actually tried three different local papers. And I spent about $4,000 before I found one advertising that actually made a difference for my ice cream business. So I don't recommend this one until you've had time to do your research, save up money and have the ability to test the waters. And by the way, you're going to get approached by everybody in town to advertise with them. Not only are the local papers going to reach out, but folks that go into your market and create advertising, for example, look on those shopping carts or placemats in stores, or local sports teams. People are going to be reaching out to you, whether they live in your community or they don't. Everyone seems to come out of the woodwork the minute they know you have a business and they're going to try to make you feel stupid for not using them. Please do not fall for that. Do not fall for all the promises that they're going to make you. You need to look into the avenues where your business can, can support it and you can create the sales that are going to pay for it. A lot of times they make you these crazy promises and you're they, very few of them can ever live up to it. And the key to print advertising is consistency. You need to be able to have the finances to be able to commit on a regular basis. Because at this point, it's not necessarily about driving people into your stores. A lot of this advertising is more about brand placement and people remembering you. They see your name over and over and over. And your mission is hoping that they're going to remember you when they finally need you. So they're very hard to track and you don't want to spend money if you don't think you're going to get that bang for your buck. To me, your best bet is to spend that money on those truck wraps we talked about earlier, because at least you know they're getting the impression that you want them to get, and they can walk up to you at that moment if they need you. All right, we're going to take a few minutes and talk about social media. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a different episode, but I do want to touch on it a little bit here. Social media is another free option for you to use to market your new business. There's a lot of paid items on these social media sites. I'm not saying start with paying for advertising right away. Your goal is to pick one or two where you think your clients are and just create a presence. The key is to picking ones that complement your business the best, where they're more likely to come into contact with your ideal customer. Customer. For example, if you have a very visual business, then Instagram and Facebook are probably going to be the best ways that you're going to be able to get in front of your customer. People love before and after pictures, so they're going to see the work that you do and they're going to realize that you're a small local business. They're more likely to want to support you. I want you to think about who your potential client is and where are they. Now, I will tell you, since 2 billion people are on Facebook, I guarantee you that Facebook is probably going to be one of your top two. Has it lost some of its shine over the years? Yes, but unfortunately, it still continues to be a great place to find homeowners. So if you're looking for people that own homes and you want to do business in their home, I hate to tell you this, you're going to have to dive into the necessary evil that has become Facebook. I have watched business owners blow up their business just by being on Facebook. And I'm not saying being on Facebook, paying for ads. And I'm talking about just being on Facebook, being you and people knowing that you have this business and you being part of the community. And what happens is because they grow to love you, when people start asking for recommendations, they're more likely to recommend you because they love you as a person and what you stand for. So Facebook can be a really great uh, investment for you of your time if you keep it to 10, 15 minutes a day and not go down the rabbit hole that is Facebook. Now, another important key to your marketing is going to be the person in the mirror, and that is you. You are going to be the most free person that you have. And the longer you are in business, the better you're going to get at talking about your business. 
Now I get it. I'm an introvert. So I totally understand not wanting to go out and meet a bunch of people and go to networking events. I remember when I joined one of them just to challenge myself. Oh my God, it was so torturous, which is really funny because I play an extrovert at work, but honestly, I'm an introvert. So I'm not a big fan of networking meetings, but yet they work. There's two different types of networking. One is when it's different people every single time. And then there's networking where it's the same people week after week. I will tell you for an introvert, meeting the same people week after week gets a lot easier because you get to know these people. Therefore, it's not as torturous to you as opposed to other types of networking where it's a new person all of the time. The hardest thing is you need to remember people connect with people. People want to hear good things about the people they allow into their home and who they do business with. In a local community, the best thing you can do is build relationships and let them refer you to their family and friends. If people get to know you and they get to trust you, they're more likely to pass you along to the people that they care about. But by the way, this isn't just in networking groups. When you're out talking to people, you need to let them know what you do. It doesn't mean hit them over the head with it, but when they open the door to ask you what it is that you do, make sure you don't just say carpet cleaner. Just say, I'm a business owner here in town. Oh, really? What do you do? I clean carpets. It's a conversation starter versus just a matter of fact, I clean carpets. See how that makes a difference? Work it into the conversation. Make sure that it seems natural because you want to get people to start asking more questions to learn more about your business. When people get invested in you, they're going to want to be able to help you and they might start finding people to send your way, especially if you tell them you're new into business or you just started this business. They're going to want to try to help you. So have some business cards ready so in case they ask. It's like, oh, really? Do you have any cards? I'll be glad to send you out to my friends. I'd love to help you get your business going. People love helping people. So as you run into folks at McDonald's or Walmart or the gas station, have a plan on what you plan to say. We call this an elevator speech. It's those 10, 15 second things that you're asked as a quick answer when people ask what it is that you do. So just say, hey, I'm a business owner. I started a carpet cleaning business. I'm a new local business owner. I started a blank business. Have something in mind that you plan to say in the very beginning and then naturally transition that the longer you're in business. Now, another great group of people that I really want you to get to know are real estate agents. Nobody in your town or community recommends more people on a regular basis than a realtor. They recommend people to their sellers, to their buyers, to other agents, and to people long term. Think about it. When they get a house ready to sell, they need people that can go in and help get that house ready to sell. When they do the inspections, they need people that can come in and help do the repairs needed to sell the house. When they have a buyer, their buyer needs somebody to help them afterwards, after they close to do the rest of the stuff that's done. Other agents are constantly needing people that can help take care of their customers. So they're asking other agents and these people live in these houses for a long period of time. They don't know the local community and they're asking for other businesses that they can use locally. There's all kinds of way. I'm telling you as a realtor, I have recommended so many darn people over the years. It's ridiculous. So please make sure that you get to know these real estate agents to stop by those open houses and introduce yourself. Let them know that you might have somebody that you, they use already on a regular basis. You just want to be that backup person. I've done a couple of episodes on this over on the Badass Business Owner podcast, and I definitely recommend that you go listen to one. I've really watched some small businesses blow up just by focusing on realtors. If you have a business that helps get people ready to sell their house or the most common things they have to fix afterwards, I promise you this is a group of people you really want to know. So as you can tell, there are a lot of different things that you can do. The key is to be creative and involve the community when you can. Look at other business owners and what are some of the things that they are doing to get their business out there. There's no reason you can't borrow their ideas and improve upon what it is that they're doing. Other local businesses will give you some great ideas on how to market your business. Every great idea out there started with somebody that triggered some idea. So it's okay that you're borrowing from them. Now, as we wrap this up, there's one thing I want to make sure that we discuss to ensure that your business is being referred to time and time again. The cornerstone of your new business is going to be great customer service and great quality of products and services that you will provide. By setting a high bar like this, you create a great word of mouth that will spread and become your number one marketing assets. The reputation that you create around these two items will get people praising your business and telling other people about it. Your brand, your reputation is going to get you more business in the future than anything else that you can ever do. 
I can't tell you how many small businesses I have talked to and coached that have never spent a dime on advertising. It is 100% word of mouth. They know that if they go in there and they take care of their customers like nobody else can, those people are going to be those loyal soldiers I talked about earlier, and they're going to go out and try to get them more business and they're going to recommend them in a heartbeat. So please make sure that from day one, you are ensuring that you are building the best brand and reputation that you could possibly do. And you do this through fantastic customer service, high quality work, being on time and service with a smile. If people love you, they will tell everybody that they can to use you. Now in our next episode, we're going to dive in a little bit more to website and what it is that you need, the do's and don'ts, stuff like that. So you're not going to want to miss that one. I know this has been a long episode. Hang in there. We're headed into the home stretch on the stuff you need to be able to start your new business. And I can't wait for you to get those doors open. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.